Here we're going to take a look at the way NMR experiments are actually performed nowadays using the pulsed nuclear magnetic resonance method. The pulsed NMR method takes heavy advantage of the Fourier transform using the idea that if we apply radio frequency light of all frequencies to the sample, we can excite all nuclei at once and obtain the entire frequency spectrum in one go without having to scan over multiple frequencies, as you might have to do, for example, in an ultraviolet visible experiment where you have to scan the visible range from red to purple. That's not needed in a pulsed NMR experiment since the input light spans the entire range of frequencies that the nuclei might resonate at. This saves enormous time in NMR experiments. And that's important in NMR because now that we've, we're in the radio frequency range of the spectrum, we're talking about wave periods that are relatively long. And so the experiments are relatively long, temporally speaking. So strategies that can shorten up this time are advantageous for the method. All that said, the most intuitive approach to conducting an NMR experiment involves using specific wavelengths of radio frequency or RF light while keeping the sample in a static magnetic field. One way to obtain an NMR spectrum is to, for example, start at high frequency radio waves over here and scan all the way to low frequency radio waves over here and look for frequencies where we observe resonance where we see, for example, peaks. So for the majority of what's going on here, there's nothing happening, the sample's doing nothing, but when we hit a frequency where the sample resonates, we observe a peak. This strategy is referred to as continuous wave NMR since we're applying radio frequency power throughout the experiment. This takes a long time because we have to go all the way from high to low frequency, and for the vast majority of the time, nothing's happening right, since we're not at a resonant frequency. In a pulsed NMR experiment, the strategy is fundamentally different. In that experiment, we apply a high energy pulse of radio frequency light. And by pulse, we just mean we've got some radio frequency generator that maybe would generate a radio wave that looks like this. We apply a pulse of it, meaning we turn it on, and then we very shortly thereafter turn it off so that the signal, the radio frequency signal applied to the sample is windowed. It's got a start and an end. This has the interesting effect of broadening out the frequency spectrum of that applied light. And so, for example, if we make sure to set our parameters for this radio frequency generator and the window so that all possible precession frequencies for a proton would fall in this range that I'm highlighting, right? We've got a very powerful signal across all of those frequencies, right, as a result of the windowing. The musical analogy here is plucking all of the strings on a guitar all at once. Picking up an audio waveform, which is going to be a complicated mess since we played multiple strings at once, and then using the Fourier transform to convert that into a much cleaner looking frequency spectrum where, in the case of the guitar string, the frequencies observed would correspond exactly to the five strings of the guitar. And I think the guitar example gives you a nice sense of the beauty of this method. It's, on a time scale, much more efficient. Much more efficient, for example, than plucking each string individually and making measurements that way. We can pluck all of the hydrogens at once and observe the frequency spectrum in one go after one excitation of all of the hydrogens in the molecule. Another advantage of this method is that we don't need radio frequency power the entire time during the experiment. We only need it during this brief moment when the pulse is applied. And, thanks to the geometry of the situation, which we won't get into in detail, but I'll just state, data collection is easy because the same radio frequency coil that supplied the pulse of radio frequency light can be used as the detector with the current running in the opposite direction now as it feels the magnetic field given off by the nuclei instead of supplying a magnetic field to the nuclei. 